the nature of Bitcoin is such that once version 0.1 was released, the core design was set in stone for the rest of its lifetime. Satoshi Nakamoto. And the other thing that, uh, like I've talked to the roll-up teams that they all want to do next year, is they want to start taking off trading wheels, right? So the roll-ups and uh, layer twos that exist on Ethereum today, they basically all have what I call training wheels, like some kind of backdoor that lets developers uh, come in and like say stop and change the protocol if they see that some kind of bug has happened. <laughs> Some kind of backdoor that lets developers uh, come in and, like, say stop and change the protocol. Oh, come on! No one who acts as the lord of the repository. It's fucking Bitcoin. The whole purpose is to have things not controlled. Part of why I fucking disappeared was to have things not controlled and i have to come back to control things to get it fucking not controlled that's the freaking irony of this shit fucking think people honestly if you don't already follow true flaps on crypto twitter at boring sleuth i strongly suggest you do he has the most intricate detailed undeniable research on crypto twitter he makes the crypto graphics links all the wallets it's absolutely mind-blowing this is why he has to say I spent the last 48 hours sleuthing the Ethereum Foundation's wallets along with the original Kraken Exchange's top deposit and withdraw addresses. What I unlocked was the evidence I need to easily show you that the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, imagine that, is behind Ethereum and that some of the original Ethereum devs and the Foundation have been rugging their own ecosystem to keep it liquid and from crashing. Oh lord. They set up and funded the original exchanges, market makers, protocols to create the illusion of a thriving ecosystem. Also the CCP and the minority greedy developers could loan their PPP funds while stealing every ounce of wealth they could possibly do without blowing the cover. Their time is up. I've beat this horse to death and more. The essence of having a decentralized protocol, AE, a blockchain, Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever, is it being locked. In other words, the rules don't change. You want to have the certainty that, say you left coins for your kids, that 50 years down the line, the supply of the coins will be exactly the same. You will still have access to those coins and so on. On the other hand, if developers just can't go willy-nilly and change things in the protocol, it means that uh, you trust your entire net worth that you hold on the blockchain to Mr. Vitalik and his friends. How many rugs and hacks have we seen in the ecosystem? Who's to say that it wasn't them? Who's to say? I would incline more towards uh, the idea that it was an inside job, it usually is the developers, it usually is the exchanges themselves, it, it usually is the obvious culprits rather than just some random hacker. Having a backdoor in the protocol, uh, you can try and sugarcoat it as much as you like, always just in case things go pear-shaped and so on. One of the aspects of the trial next year between Craig Wright and half the crypto industry is developers have fiduciary duties. Now, if something happens, someone gets hacked, funds go missing, developers say, well, it's decentralized. I mean, what do you want me to do? So yeah, I have no liability. However, after that trial, that will not be the case. In other words, developers have fiduciary duties. So in case you have a back door into Ethereum or Layer 2s or whatever else, and then magically 60 million go missing. Oh, curva. You, you can't just wave your hand and say, well, it wasn't me, no. You, you will have uh, duties and the law. Locked protocol. In other words, no one person, no developers, 
nobody can just go in there and just change the rules add something remove something like they did to btc because btc currently known as bitcoin number one on coin market cap once again has a few developers who hold the keys to the rip repository on github in other words they completely control the protocol so whenever someone says ethereum is decentralized slap them in the face whenever someone says btc is decentralized slap them in the face it's only as decentralized as a handful of people now let's move on to nodes in the last video we looked at btc nodes and there was about 13 or 14 nodes remember unless you are making blocks you are not a node if you're connected with a raspberry pi a laptop a single miner you are not a node unless you are creating blocks now there was about 13 or 14 nodes two nodes were super important because that was over 51 percent of the hash rate and about six nodes that really mattered but ethereum is a whole on a whole other level of um centralization not only does it have less nodes but it's also proof of stake let's have a look at it ethernodes.org let me know if i understand this right so we have one two three four nodes huge nodes that really matter one certain node is over 57.9 percent and it's proof of stake so we have a group of developers that absolutely control the protocol and then we have an oligarchy of proof of stake owners who control majority of the supply ethereum foundation basically controlling majority of the supply that they've staked and you're not going to outcompete them because it's proof of stake they already hold majority of the supply of ethereum so unless they're gonna sell off their stake there's no way you can ever fairly come and compete against them with the proof of work is different i mean you can get bank loans and so on and b build a bigger farm uh, with a proof of stake unless the biggest holder which i believe is the ethereum foundation holds and stakes unless they sell off what they hold there's no way you can come and compete against them which is why proof of work is so beautiful so uh yeah ethereum gets what was there the sscc rating from me centralized scammy chinese coin and i'm tired of pretending it's not that, that, that's pretty much all you need to know about Ethereum.